Okay, so welcome back. Uh, so this is uh, we are starting now the third uh, module of week one. So we'll continue our discussion on the types of plastics uh, which we were doing in the previous module, and I hope to complete that discussion in this particular module, and then we'll try to get into other topics. So so far, if you remember what we have done, uh, we have uh, talked about what is plastic. We started looking at the types of plastic and also different types of classification of plastic based on usage, based on material. So to continue that discussion, uh, so we talked about what is plastic. We also looked at uh, we are presently focused on types of plastic, and in this particular week, we'll also look at the usage and global statistics, uh, which will be in the next uh, module. So this was the last slide that you were looking at in the previous uh, module. So it's, uh, when we talk about plastic, you can have, where you can look at from a heat perspective with respect to how it will react to heat. That's what the behavior. Then we also talked about the structure. Then we talked about the physical chemical properties and types of resin. So that's where we stopped in the previous module. So to continue that discussion in terms of thermal behavior. When we talk about thermoplastics or thermoset plastic, it's a thermoplastics. It's it's a variety which softens by heat and hardens when cooled down. So if you if you apply heat to it, it will soften. It will become uh, soft. And then when the heat is removed, uh, when we cool it down, uh, it is. Uh, it will become hard again. So it, it can be used by remolding as any times as required. So that is what uh, it is, uh, it's, uh, you, you can uh, remold it and use it for uh, diff uh, different application. You can make different products out of that. So thermoplastics is that particular category. Thermosetting plastic, it uh, cannot be reused. So that is the, so if we have more and more thermoplastics, actually it is better for recycling industry. Thermosetting plastic, it is very difficult, you cannot really reuse. This variety requires a great pressure and momentary heat during molding, which hardens on cooling. So, you cannot really use it that easily. So, it is essentially you can use it in a waste to energy. You can, you can re reuse it within the same product, but if you want to make new product after say molting this plastic out there, it does not doesn't work that way. So, thermoplastics easy to recycle. Thermoset plastic better maybe for waste to energy plants. So that's what uh, when we talk from the plastic waste management. So that's why these things are important uh, when we when we were looking at into different options for plastic waste. So thermoplastic it can it may melt uh, it before passing into a gaseous phase a state. Allow plastic deformation when it is heated. Chemical composition do not change. They are brittle and glossy. They are soluble in certain solvents. They swell in the presence of certain solvent. Good resistance to creep. So it is uh, can be remolded and made different products out of that from a thermoplastics. Uh, so it's highly recyclable. It's. Uh, it is highly recyclable, it is you can have better finish because of the material property, you can have a superior finish, nicer finish, high impact resistance, you can remold, reshape, it is chemical resistance, it is hard crystalline and rubber surface options, both options are there, you can make it hard, you can make it soft, you can just play with the temperature, uh, do the uh, process, eco friendly manufacturing because you can, again uh, uh, can be recycled much easier. Uh, what are the drawbacks? It is more expensive of course, because see it is giving you so many options of course it will be expensive. So it is more expensive than thermoset because uh, and uh, it can melt if heated. So if you are using it in a, in a, in a setting where things gets heated up. So it is if you are heating it and then uh, it can melt. So it, it can uh, uh, be uh, like cannot be used in a scenario where uh, it can potentially melt while in use. So that is where you need to be careful about that. What are the examples? Uh, we can uh, polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene, acrylics, teflon, polycarbonate, nylon, ABS, which is the uh, ac uh, acrylonitrile, butadiene, stearine. So all these different materials that you see, it's uh, it's th these are all thermoplastics. So this is uh, what the thermoplastics we use for. Thermosets, uh, they are soluble in alcohol and certain organic solvents uh, when they are in thermoplastic uh, stage. This property is utilized for making paints and varnishes from these plastics. Uh, they undergo irreversible chemical process. They are durable, they are strong and hard. They again, they can, you can make beautiful colors. They are mainly used for engineering applications of plastics. So most of the engineering applications that you use see is mostly thermoset plastic, which is very difficult to recycle. Uh, but they are more resistant to high temperature. It will not melt. 
uh, so it was not melt uh, then thermoplastic it is highly flexible design you can design it in a different ways a thick to thin wall capability you can make it very thick very thin uh, excellent aesthetic again it is uh, some of the things are same you can make nice uh, looking at high levels of dimensional stability uh, because it is again does not melt. So, even uh, will not have effect of uh, heat cost effective it is uh, uh, relatively cheaper as compared to that a uh, problem with this cannot be recycled. So, that is kind of a drawback uh, it cannot be recycled uh, more difficult for giving a good surface finish cannot be remolded or reshaped. So, once you made it that is it uh, cannot uh, really do uh, many things with that. So, that is of course, the drawbacks with that, but again at the same time uh, it is every both thermosets and thermoplastics uh, both have different kind of applications as you prop, as you saw for thermoplastic. Similarly, in the thermosets we use it for epoxy, polyurethane, unsaturated polyesters, uh, phenolics, silicone. So, all those different applications that you have where the thermosets are used a uh, lot of uh, for the construction application for the uh, construction application application for different machine parts where things may get really heated up and so that is where thermoset plastics are most, most useful uh, than uh, thermoplastic. So, so that is based on uh, the how it is behavior against temperature and if you it, so that is uh, the if you remember the last slide from previous module and the first slide in the first module in this module which was the same where we are looking at the different uh, ki different types of classification. So, if we looked at classification based on behavior against temperature now in this particular slide we are looking at classification based on their structure. So, based on the structure of the plastic. So, whether it is a homogeneous or heterogeneous. So, Homogeneous plastic, uh, uh, these plastics are composed only of hydrocarbon atoms and they exhibit a homogeneous structure. So, what are those? Polyethylene again, polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene, they are, they are homogeneous. Now, what is heterogeneous plastic? These plastics are composed of the chain containing carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and other elements and they exhibit a heterogeneous structure. So, the structure is not a homogeneous, there is a like a, it is a heterogeneous structure. Examples includes polytetrafluoroethylene, polymides or nylons, polyvinyl chloride and then ABS, these are the heterogeneous plastic. So, this is a homogeneous versus heterogeneous plastic. And, uh, then, then uh, if you look at from uh, physical and chemical properties, uh, uh, there are rigid plastic uh, which is very like a strong like SDPE uh, tubs, uh, polypropylene cups, PET pallets they are very rigid. Uh, they will uh, and then you have semi rigid plastic which is LDPE films, flexible ducts where you can have ducts can move around a little bit, PVC seats. So, these are uh, semi rigid. Then you have a soft plastic children's toys if you have looked at toys those ducts and other stuff that is uh, made out of uh, plastic those are uh, soft plastic uh, rattles uh, fishing baits because fishing baits has to be soft uh, and then elastomers elastomers or uh, polys uh, uh, polyiso uh, polyisoprene uh, polybutadiene uh, polyisobutylene. So, there are the, those are elasto that is like elastic plastic. Uh, so, it is a more elastic property. So, it is it is not at all it is actually totally opposite to rigid. So, as we go from uh, uh, from uh, like a from uh, from the left to right uh, we are seeing first rigid plastic then the semi rigid soft plastic and the elastomers. So, as you move uh, along uh, you are looking at the elasticity of the material actually going up. So, it is becoming more and more flexible and uh, every different types of these different types of plastics are different applications as, uh, as we know. So, rigid plastic will be the plastics which are high modulus of elasticity as uh, uh, modulus of elasticity based on your uh, strength of material codes you know what is what is modulus of elasticity it is the ratio of a stress versus a strain. So, a stress will be on the top a numerator a strain will be in the denominator and we get uh, a stress divided by strain gets the modulus of elasticity. It basically tells us how strong, how rigid uh, that material is. Uh, high modulus of elasticity, they retain their shape under exterior stress applied at normal and moderately increased temperature. Semi rigid, 
uh, these plastics have medium modulus of elasticity. They can elongate under pressure uh, uh, under uh, and the elongation that is there uh, under pressure completely disappears when the pressure is removed. So, it is kind of have little bit of plasticity there as well. So, you can uh, you can apply some pressure things will uh, uh, things may elongate and once they take the pressure off it will kind of come try to come back to its original uh, original uh, shape and size. Then soft plastic, this plastic has a very low modulus of elasticity and the elongation under pressure disappears slowly. So, you can uh, you, you put uh, if you elongate it under pressure and then you take the pressure off you will have a slowly dis uh, coming back uh, to the normal uh, shape and size. So, when the pre so that is what the soft plastic is all about and then uh, you have elastomers which is a soft and elastic material with very, very low modulus of elasticity. They deform considerably under load at room temperature and return to original shape uh, when the load is released. Uh, so, the extensions can range up to 10 times their original dimension. So, think about the rubber band and all some of these are stretchable things you can stretch and once the pressure is removed it kind of comes back to the original uh, shape. So, those are your elastomers as the name suggests elasto, elasto means they are elastic, elastic means which is uh, which, which can be easily stretched and then it tries to come back to its uh, original shape when the pressure uh, or is uh, taken off. Then uh, we were talking about the from the, if you remember from the first slide of this particular module we were looking at the different resin types and I was telling you in the last module towards the end I was trying to remind you about the uh, uh, number coding. So, that is what uh, over here on this particular slide we are looking at the number coding where you have the code 1 uh, uh, which is a PET material and then you have uh, uh, you we have uh, code 2 which is the HDPE, PET is the polyethylene uh, tetra phthalate. Then we have uh, HDPE which is uh, uh, high density high density poly polyethylene material, we have PVCs uh, which is number 3, number 4 is LDPE which is low density polyethylene, then PP polypropylene, number 6 is polyesterolene and then 7 is basically all other plastic including polycarbonate, uh, acrylic, liquid crystals, polymers, uh, LCP, nylon all those things together is our number 7. So, as we go from if you look at from number 1 uh, from uh, number 1 to number 7 as you go down the list uh, it becomes uh, uh, economically it becomes uh, less and less incentive to recycle those. Uh, PET is the most uh, recyclable material easy to recycle and economically it makes sense. SDPE is next then the PVC then LDPE then PV and polystyrene. So, this number coding is very very important uh, when we look at the plastic waste because when we will try to uh, try to manage this plastic waste in a in a scientific way. Uh, one of the things we would we should look at and we will probably have to look at in uh, coming years or decades is trying to separate this plastic based on this different uh, code. Some countries they are already doing that which when we try to separate PET, HDP and PVC, LDP they try to separate those at least PET and HDP is separated from rest because those two are easily recyclable and makes good value of uh, uh, economically it makes a lot of sense to recycle those as opposed to others. Sometimes PP, PS and other plastics it is better to send it to a waste to energy plant we will talk about that when we go into the waste management part of it uh, as opposed to trying to uh, recycle uh, this material. So, PET what is that I uh, will uh, try to it in some of these material we will try to look at what is PET it is uh, uh, this plastic is most commonly used uh, in on the planet right now uh, it took another. So, introduced by J Rex Weinfeld and James T Dixon in 1940 uh, this plastic is one of the most commonly used on the planet it took another 30 years because it was used for crystal clear beverage bottle. So, in 1940 it kind of uh, it was used quite a bit such as the ones produced by Coca Cola and Pepsi. So, initially the reason for that uh, which uh, uh, initially the plastic uh, what they were trying to use the glass bottle. So, it, uh, sorry the uh, beverage containers were mostly using the glass bottles and when the in 19 if I remember correctly around 1969, 1970 at that particular time would kind of make sense 1940 plus 30 is 1970. So, 1969 Coca Cola did a study which we kind of refer to that in our LCA course uh, that uh, Coca Cola did a study where they looked at whether it is e whether it is better to uh, replace this glass bottles with plastic bottles for packaging of this uh, uh, beverage uh, drink. 
uh, because they, they started making these plastic bottles, uh, the PET bottles and then it was lighter. Lighter means uh, uh, compared to glass, it was light material, light material uh, it was uh, light material means it will be less heavy, less heavy means less cost on transportation and will uh, help them to reduce the cost a uh, little bit. So, that was the reason they were trying to go for a plastic bottle. So, uh, PET plastic now today are kind of makes up 96 percent of all plastic bottles and container in US uh, and only 25 percent of those are actually getting recycled. So, when you think about plastic waste, of course, in India we have a bigger problem, but other countries are also not doing a very good job into plastic recycling as you if, uh, there are some countries who are doing wonderful job, but US which we probably expect much better than 25 percent. Uh, it is it is uh, if we can if we can help in terms of uh, recycling these uh, code 1 plastic uh, actually we are we are helping into cleaner environment less landfill pollution and that is very much needed. So, it is a monomer of PET, PET is an excellent moisture, moisture and water barrier material, it is uh, oxygen permeability is uh, uh, it is uh, it's very low, it is kind of keeps uh, it is a lightweight, it is a semi rigid robust and impact resistance and it is a hygroscopic in nature. So, that is kind of helps in uh, its usage as uh, different kind of applications where it is used. So, this is essentially the kind of gives you a monomer of PET. So, what we, we use it for PET is uh, beverage container, water bottles, different types of containers for uh, 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 like a, our uh, uh, food containers, uh, some cleaning supplies as you can see on this particular picture and you will see that number 1 P that uh, sign along with that as well. Here you see a picture of tomato ketchup right there which, which uh, if you can uh, uh, look at that particular uh, picture uh, over here, we have this tomato ketchup bottle. This tomato ketchup bottle is not only the PET material, it is uh, it has the PET, but at the same time it uh, has a layer in between as well. We are trying to, uh, we do not want the gas movement to trap the gas and moisture movement. It has a two layer of PET and in between it has a, again a material in between which kind of uh, keeps it uh, uh, the, the, the tomato ketchup fresh uh, and so that is the because uh, many times when you buy those tomato ketchup it will say almost its uh, expiry date will be a, a year from them, a year or sometimes more from that particular date uh, of manufacture. So, the reason to keep it fresh and nice we have a layer of insulator kind of material in between and then there is one PET, two PET and with a layer in between and that is how this plastic uh, uh, those uh, bottles are made uh, and for catch up and similar application. So, which is actually a mixed plastic, but most predominantly it is PET, but it is not 100 percent PET. So, that is what I wanted to uh, point out to you. Then uh, next most popular is HDPE again in 1953 it came about. You do not have to memorize uh, many of these uh, stuff like uh, uh, kind of uh, the name of the people and all that. I do not uh, think we will have uh, uh, questions along that line, but uh, it is always better to have some general idea about when the plastic uh, actually came into being. It is a most commonly recycled plastic because it is not uh, uh, break under exposure to extreme heat. According to EPA only 12 percent of uh, is recycled, which again it is a US data. Uh, the reason for that uh, is uh, it, in an Indian scenario finding this data is also very difficult. So, we'll, we'll, we are trying to dig into the data and uh, to find uh, how much, what percentage of PET is recycled, what percent of HDP is recycled in India, we do not have those data easily available. So, again those of you who uh, are taking this course and have some information. As I said in the very beginning in the intro video of this course, uh, there is not, there is no textbook on this particular course. And uh, so, when I decided to offer it, it was not that, not only for, it is a team learning. I want you guys to actively participate and bring some information, put it on the discussion board which we can discuss. And uh, so, there might be at the end of the course, I also want to learn much more about plastic waste than what I know as of today, because it will be a, 
and uh, it will be a team effort and where uh, whatever you learn will will I will get and whatever I know I will uh, share with you so let's share with each other and enrich our knowledge on plastic waste management and plastic in general so that we can take care of this plastic pollution in the country and meet the goal of our uh, which uh, our prime minister already announced but that by 2022 we will not use any single use plastic so that and we will of course we need to cut down the usage of other plastic as well to reduce the plastic pollution uh, from getting into the ocean getting into the water getting into our food chain you may have heard recently there have been studies which has uh, showed that many of the salt uh, salt that without salt there cannot be any food isn't it you can can you take a food uh, like your uh, regular uh, meal uh, without a pinch of salt you need salt if salt is not there by mistake uh, if we forget to add salt to our dal or uh, uh, our curries uh, it becomes tasteless we need to add some salt to make it really taste uh, good and uh, Many of these salt uh, varieties have been uh, salt product which is available in the market different brands when tested had microplastics in them. So you and I don't want plastic in our body because that will it can create different kind of disease. We also don't know what kind of disease it can create because since it's a newer thing but it is showing up in the food chain. It is showing up in the fish, it is showing up in, in, in salt. So, those of us, uh, those of you who think that, oh, I'm a vegetarian, uh, that uh, uh, this instructor is keep on talking about fish, fish, I don't take fish, I don't stay in, in West Bengal, so <laughs> West Bengal fishes are kind of our national food, but uh, <laughs> should not call it national food, but uh, fish is essential. Uh, with uh, in many of the meals, but uh, it's kind of very common practice to have uh, fish almost every day. But uh, in other, if even if you are a vegetarian and you don't take fish at all, you cannot eat without salt, isn't it? You need some salt, and the salt uh, microplastics are showing up there. So that's why we need to increase the recycling rate. We need to let manage the plastic waste properly, and for that, if you find some information which is not being covered in this particular course put it on the discussion board. We would like to have a good discussion on it and of course, we will have some live session uh, where we can, uh, if you put something on discussion board, we can discuss it uh, on the live session as well. So, that will be really fun and it will all will learn something new as we make progress in this particular course. So, this is it how the uh, monomara of HDPE. So, for each of the type we have put this uh, uh, their structures and other stuff for you to look at just to get an idea. Uh, the density ranges uh, close to almost 1000 kg per meter cube. So, 930 to 970 kg per meter cube, it is harder, it can withstand high temperature around 120 degrees centigrade. Uh, the physical properties can vary depending on the molding process. To make the specific sample is strong and it is a dimensionally stable material. So, that is why you see SDPE application in most of the study like your buckets and uh, uh, your uh, like big, big, big tumblers, big uh, drums, you see mostly uh, HDPE is used for those applications. In common application that you uh, mostly you will see for those kind of containers and, uh, and milk bottle, uh, your uh, soap containers, uh, soap, shampoo and all those as mostly HDPE material that again you, leave to, you have to look at number 2. Whenever you look at uh, uh, these uh, plastic, look at the number and if it is number 2, it is HDPE. Polyvinyl chloride, it is the oldest synthetic material. Uh, it was actually discovered by accident in 1838 uh, by one uh, French physicist Henry Victor uh, Renault. And then again in 1872 by German scientist uh, Eugen Bobin. Uh, on both occasions, they found it inside vinyl chloride flask le left exposed to sunlight. So, they had the vinyl chloride exposed to sunlight and they found it there. PVC is one of the least recycled material, generally less than 1 percent uh, is recycled. It has been called the poison plastic because it contains numerous toxic and harmful to our health and the environment. So, PVC is what we need to we need to think about like how to manage PVC uh, plastic waste in a much better way. So, that uh, this tag of poison plastic is it is not good. So, we need to kind of think about how to uh, manage that. PVC most of the time it cannot be recycled very easily. So, it can be reused, uh, but it cannot be recycled very easily. So, 
for that kind of material uh, having some sort of uh, waste to energy process and other process does help where you can use this PVC again polyvinyl chloride. So, it has a halogen. So, you need to be really very very careful in terms of when you use it for waste to energy you need to have a very high temperature. So, that you do not have dioxins and furans being formed which is formed in the presence of halogens. Halogens are what are those halogens chloride, bromide, iodide, fluoride those are called halogens uh, compound halogens uh, halogen elements which is uh, it is there in one particular group of the periodic table which uh, uh, we have uh, uh, learned about in our high school and other stuff. So, this is uh, this is like a uh, polyvinyl chloride uh, it's a, uh, it's, it's a, uh, you kind of uh, use the application of polyvinyl. It's you can use it for the laser uh, appl application. You use for cables, for packaging, for pipes, for windows, for floorings. You have uh, tensile roofs. You have medical applications. So PVCs are used a lot, and recycle the least. So it's this is what needs our focus. Again, this kind of this makes our sense in terms of if you are still wondering why our course is just still discussing about the type of plastic and all that it is it's, it's essential it is uh, because this kind of information is needed to make a good decision in terms of the plastic waste management. So, these are kind of background information is needed uh, as I keep on saying that uh, uh, when we talk about any any waste management or any any plan that we make uh, we need to do a uh, good diagnosis of the problem and this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to get the background information so that we will have a good diagnosis of the problem. Then LDPE it is the first polyethylene to be produced making it the godfather of the material. It has less mass uh, than HDPE that is why it is considered separate material for recycling. Uh, packaging and containers are made for LDPE uh, which is uh, 50 percent 56 percent of all plastic waste 75 percent of which comes from residential household. So, a lot of packaging material and containers are LDPE. So, there are a lot of recycling programs to handle this product. Uh, this means less LDPE will end up in the landfill and that is what we want and that is the goal of uh, uh, the project uh, of, of any good waste management system. LDPE it is a very low density, uh, density is defined uh, then it can withstand temperature up to 80 degrees. It cannot uh, it is not reactive at room temperature except by strong oxidizing agent. Uh, so, that is why it is used a lot of household application is strong and dimensionally stable material high resilience and that kind of shows you uh, the. So, this is the application a lot of uh, bags you have uh, different kind of containers the thin containers wrappers and uh, all those things as you can see on this picture they are mostly LDPE material low density polyethylene material. Polypropylene uh, which is uh, 3 percent of the polypropylene products are recycled in US. Uh, 350 million pounds were collected for recycling over a year, but a uh, lot of this plastic is created, but only a small fraction is actually recycled. So, that is what uh, so polypropylene again uh, we have to it is it is it is needed uh, it needs to be uh, recycling and better management practices needs to be looked into that. It is rigid, it is opaque, uh, it is flexible, low density, it is electrical and abrasion resistance, good dimensional stability, excellent chemical resistance, weathering resistance. So, that is uh, and as you can see the monomer it is a C with a 2 H and then we have a CH 3 which is like a methyl group is there as well. So, that is uh, on the polypropylene side and you can you use it for different application for the food containers, for some uh, uh, furnitures, from an industry application in cosmetics, you have medicine and health. So, different applications are there in terms of uh, uh, use of polypropylene uh, in, uh, in, uh, in our day to day effect. Polystyrene or styrofoam uh, which is again 1839 uh, accidentally came across that uh, which say uh, they did some research on polymers. So, polystyrene is very lightweight and it can easily form into different plastic material breaks effortlessly. It is it's, it's more harmful for the environment beaches all over the world are littered with pieces of polystyrene. So, it is uh, in endangering the health of marine animals polystyrene accounts for about 33 35 percent of the US landfill material. So, these are essentially styroforms. So, again uh, the as you can see the monomer is different it is a rigid formed clear hard inexpensive regime easily processed good uh, aberration resistance transparent and can be colored with different uh, colors in there as well. So, applications you can see those uh, single use containers single use 
uh, bowls, plates, which you and I many times uses in our uh, uh, for a party and other stuff. And uh, when you go to a restaurant these days, they will give you the leftover. Uh, say they will ask you whether you want to take the leftover home, and they use these kind of uh, this kind of stuff as well. So, a lot of polystyrene used, very poor recycling, and you, we see it basically getting into our oceans and water very easily. And uh, so, this, these were the all different six types, and then we, whatever is not included in these, we call it other and miscellaneous plastic. The remaining plastics are polycarbonate, polyactide, acrylic, uh, a, like a ABS, like acro, nitrile, butadiene, styrene fiberglass, nylon. These are different types of plastics. Uh, there are different types of recycling program. Many of these plastics actually it's very difficult to recycle. Uh, many BPA products like bisphenol A products fall into this category. It's best to avoid this plastic for food products. We don't want BPA in our food. It is not easy to break down this plastic. Uh, they are exposed to how, unless they are exposed to high temperature. So it becomes very, very difficult to them to recycle. So, so again, the stuff or the plastic, we'll talk about in the plastic waste, we'll kind of uh, talk about uh, different methods of dealing with plastic waste. But uh, the things that cannot be recycled, sometimes it's just easy uh, for us to put it in a different treatment, like a thermal treatment could be an option. We are talking about plastic to oil, we are also talking about plastic roads. So, those things can be used over there. So, this is one example, polycarbonate, high temperature resistance, flame retardant, excellent clarity, UV resistance and the glass like material, polyacrylites, again the uh, structure is different. You have optical clarity, excellent outdoor material, good tensile strength. It can uh, resist UV, easy handling, good impact resistance, Teflon, another chemically inert, Teflon, we use Teflon coated material, excellent lubricant, excellent dielectric properties, high bulk resistivity, then polyamides, again high mechanical strength, thermal stability, tough at low temperature. So, all the different types of plastics, variety and variety of plastics are out there, probably sometimes we do not even realize. ABS, flexible design, good surface quality, dimensional stability, brilliant gloss retention, urethanes easily form, uh, good bearing surface. Uh, good insulation. So, these are uh, uh, all those different types of uh, plastics uh, which is out there. So, we will uh, kind of uh, for this uh, in this particular uh, module, we tried we what our goal was to look at different types and that is what uh, we have uh, tried to do. And then in the next video, we will start uh, in the next module uh, that would be week 1 week video number 3 is what we are completing now. So, we, video number 4 will be the next one and uh, there we will start looking at the usage. So, we so far uh, the first module was looking at what is plastic and the second and third video, this is the last uh, uh, towards the end of the third video, we try to look at what are the types. Now, in the fourth and fifth video, we will look at the uses and app, like different types of uses and some of the numbers like what is the how much is plastic is produced globally, different types and how much it is produced in India. So, again any question feel free to put it in the discussion board and we will be very happy to answer and any suggestions, any feedback do that as well. Thank you and I will see you again in the next video.